Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Live at Four on this Thursday. You like peaches? Oh, I love them. Can, I at the farmer's market, you can smell them as you're walking yeah. around the corner. They're so fragrant. Donna Weihoffen is here today, and she's made a bunch of recipes, sweet and savory. Oh, there she is over there. Yeah, you name it. That's coming up a little later this hour. And we'll find out what's happening this weekend in the yes. 608 with Emmy Fink. She's coming along. But first, here's what's making news on this Thursday. The deadly explosion in Sun Prairie will have a lasting impact on the community. This, this evening, city leaders are asking people to share their thoughts on how to rebuild the heart of downtown. A Janesville school employee is facing several child pornography charges. We'll tell you how the district is responding to his arrest. And President Trump is still facing criticism with how he dealt with Russia. What congressional lawmakers are pushing for following this week's summit. Let's take a look outside today. Some much needed rain yep. falling this afternoon. Absolutely. It's not widespread, but... There is some coming down. It's a great shot of the lake. Very pretty. The weather words for today, showery stretch. Say that three times, <laughs> Dave Caulfield. Out in the backyard. No rain here. That's what I do in the morning to wake a up. Showery it's a showery stretch, yes, stretch right there just to clear out all the cobwebs. <laughs> and unfortunately, we are dealing with uh, some rainy days ahead of us, although a little bit of clearing right now on the weather patio, but that's not the case for everyone. Scattered showers and thunderstorms are really going to be a staple of the forecast as we head into the next couple of days. Check out in Iowa, though, just east of I-35 bunch of tornado warnings forming just south of this low pressure system. I don't think we're going to get anything like that across southern Wisconsin, although some of these showers and thunderstorms could feature some heavy downpours over the next couple of days. That's really the only severe weather threat I see going forward. A live look in Platteville, our next round of rain looking to possibly come by on our Queen Bee Radio Skycam. And we've had a couple of rounds of rain so far today, but again, it's going to be widely scattered. So this is an umbrella at the ready forecast. It won't be a washout by any means, but heavy downpours are likely over the next couple of days in spots. Temperatures have really cooled off with that rain and cloud cover. 70 in Madison, 75 in Janesville, 77 in Boscobel, and 73 in Platteville. Dew points, they are definitely elevated into the mid 60s, so starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable in spots. About 5 to 10 degrees more humid than this time yesterday. Wind speeds, they were a little bit gusty, but the rain actually has helped with that a little bit, but still some gusts at about 15 miles per hour in spots. A live look in Madison, a little bit of blue sky showing up on the WIC TV sky cam, but scattered showers are likely into this evening and also into later tonight. Your first alert traffic update. We're taking a live look at the Beltline and Todd Drive. A little bit slow go in both directions. No major accidents or incidents to report across Dane County, but we are seeing those normal slow, uh, slowdowns on the Beltline from west to east, closer to Seminole Highway and also Fish Hatchery Road, Park Street, John Nolan Drive, all looking pretty slow right now. Not too bad, closer to Stoughton Road in the interstate, but also starting to see a few brake lights there as well. Already up to 17 minutes from Verona Road to John Nolan eastbound. That's an average speed of around 15 miles per hour. Some other routes, though, are looking good. The Beltline to Janesville, 28 minutes. That's pretty good for this time of day, an average speed of around 65 miles per hour. And that is your first alert traffic. We'll track these scattered showers and storms hour by hour in your first alert forecast in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Dave. Sun Prairie is ready to talk about rebuilding. The city council is meeting with the community tonight to go over how they will put the intersection of Bristol and Maine, which is really the heart that of is. Sun Prairie, put it back together. Amy Reed is standing by live to tell us what they'll be going over tonight. Amy? Yeah, you can still see the scene is quite devastating behind me and there's a lot of repair that needs to be done. Tonight, the city asked the Department of Transportation to come out and discuss how that's going to happen. Now, we spoke with the mayor earlier and he said the DOT is really the expert on this since this is a major intersection for the town. And after the department goes over their plan, they'll have a question and answer so people can get some clarity. Obviously, the rebuilding will take more than some infrastructure, but the mayor said this is symbolic and a starting point for the other work that needs to be done. We also need to move on as a city. This has happened. We've had buildings destroyed. We need to pick up from here, fix the road, determine what's going to happen with those buildings. That says Sun Prairie is back. 
The mayor went on to say he's proud of his community, the support they've shown for the bar family, the downtown businesses, the firefighters. It's truly remarkable. Now, the meeting tonight will be at 530 at Sun Prairie City Hall, and we will be there. We'll be bringing you updates throughout the night. We'll send it back to you. All right, Amy Reed reporting live for us from downtown Sun Prairie. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. There are multiple fundraisers taking place for the victims of the Sun Prairie explosion. Right now, Hertz Donuts in Middleton is selling Sun Prairie Strong Donuts uh, to raise money for the victims of last week's fatal explosion downtown. The donuts are $3 each, and 100% of the proceeds will be donated to the Sun Prairie Disaster Relief Fund. That's very nice. Yeah, it is. Those good, good donuts, good. too. Yeah. yeah, there's a reason to go over there. Well, hospitals in states, including Wisconsin, are dealing with medication shortages, forcing them to work with limited resources. A variety of drug shortages over the last six months have the state's hospitals seeking alternatives. Some hospitals around the country are running out of morphine and other drugs that they use in their ERs. The FDA recently announced it would create a task force addressing drug shortages that peaked in 2011 have been a persistent problem ever since. The shortages come as communities face a nationwide opioid epidemic. A man who worked as a custodian at a Rock County high school is charged with possession of child pornography. The district employee was charged with five separate counts. Rock County reporter Adam Duxter joins us in our bureau at the Janesville Gazette with how the Janesville School District is responding. Adam? David Fredericks worked as a nighttime custodian for the school district since 2015, meaning he'd come in at 3.30 and work until midnight. But the other day, according to a statement from the school district of Janesville, the district conducted a sweep of Parker High School in all the bathrooms, locker rooms, and Fredericks office space. The school district also added, quote, well, the charges are not based on any information found at or on SDJ locations or computer resources. Due to the nature of the accusation, the SDJ has placed Fredericks on unpaid administrative leave and his access to all district resources has been revoked. Police first searched Fredericks' home on Monday. Right now, he's out on signature bond. He has a court date set for August 8th. We'll continue to follow it. Thank you, Adam. President Trump signed an executive order establishing a new jobs training initiative for American workers today, but many questions remain on his conflicting statements about whether he believes Russia meddled in the 2016 presidential election. The president is facing increasing pressure to explain why he did not publicly denounce Russian President Vladimir Putin during their summit in Finland. Dan Coates, the chief intelligence officer, says he stands by those findings wished he had made a different statement, uh, but I think that now that has uh, been uh, clarified. Republicans in the House Intelligence Committee blocked a motion today by Democrats to subpoena the interpreter who was in the room with Mr. Trump and Putin. The president has also received criticism for not shutting down a request from Putin to interrogate former U.S. Ambassador Michael McFaul. President Trump says he wants another meeting with Putin in Washington, D.C., but no date has yet been set. Wildfires are scorching at least 10 states in the West, causing evacuations and at least two deaths. Strong winds and dry conditions are fueling a wildfire that's tearing through wheat fields in central Oregon. The fire about 80 miles east of Portland burned nearly 45,000 acres in 24 hours, prompting the governor to issue a state of emergency. To the south, more than 1,800 firefighters are battling a forest fire west of Yosemite National Park that has now grown to 17,000 acres. Wow. Very dry out west. Spectacular. Still to come, it's almost the weekend here in the 608. We'll find out about some of the fun events taking place around Madison in the next few days. And an Arizona law would give custody of frozen embryos to the person who wants a baby after a divorce. We'll meet the ex-couple at the center of this fight. That's next at four.
A new law in Arizona about the custody of frozen embryos is causing some controversy. The law which took effect July 1st says in cases when a couple gets divorced, the law requires courts to give the embryos to the ex who plans to use them to have a baby. Tony DeCoppel has the story of one ex-couple at the center of this fight. I wanted to at one day become a mom. Ruby Torres always wanted kids, so when she was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2014, she decided to undergo in vitro fertilization. I wasn't sure what was going to happen in my future, um, and so I wanted to ensure that I had that option. Doctors used her eggs and her then fiance's sperm to form seven embryos, but by the time she was medically cleared to try to get pregnant, they were divorcing, and he no longer wanted children. A judge ruled that Torres had no right to use the embryos. I was angry. There's a potential for children to be born that will have my DNA and I will never see them. In similar cases across the country, courts often rule in favor of the person who does not want the embryos used. But a new Arizona state law would change that. The legislation gives custody of the embryos to the spouse who intends to allow them to develop to birth. CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman. Most courts that have looked at the situation of embryos have decided that they will only bring the embryos to term if both sides mutually consent. The new law says the spouse that is not awarded the embryos has no parental responsibilities and no right, obligation, or interest with respect to the child, meaning they wouldn't be forced to pay child support. Claudia Work represents Taurus's ex-husband, John Terrell. And even if the law states that they're not a legal parent, they're still an emotional parent. It's virtually impossible to separate themselves from the fact that their ex had a child that is biologically theirs. Now, by the way, the law cannot be applied retroactively, and therefore it shouldn't directly affect the Torres case, which is under appeal. Tony DeCopel, CBS News, New York. And the Department of Health and Human Services says there are more than 600,000 frozen embryo embryos in the United States. New research is looking at the link between teens using digital media and ADHD. Researchers say teens who spend more time online are twice as likely to develop new symptoms of the disorder. ADHD is a condition that makes it difficult to pay attention for a sustained period of time. It also involves trouble with hyperactivity and impulsivity. The Centers for Disease Control finds nearly 1 in 10 children in the U.S., over 6 million kids, have some form of the disorder. Nearly half of all gyms in the United States have tanning beds. A new study finds people who tan at their gym are more likely to become addicted to tanning. Researchers say pairing exercise with tanning sends the message that tanning is part of a healthy lifestyle, which it is not. Doctors say tanning beds increase exposure to UV light and can cause melanoma. Interesting. Stocks fell on Wall Street on some sour earnings reports and trade fears. The Dow Industrials dropped 134 points, ending the day at 25,064. The Nasdaq Composite Index lost 29. The S&P 500 fell 11. It is almost the weekend in the 608. It's almost here, and Emmy Fink is here with a look at what's going on around town this weekend in Madison. Hi, Emmy. Hi, Emmy. Welcome back. Thank you. Good I, to see I you. I missed you both last week. Missed you, we too. Missed you. It's just not the same when I don't come here on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> you missed the whole day. You don't, your weeks all screwed up. All right. Let's start with an annual favorite. Well, can you smell it all the way from the Alliant Energy Center, the corn dogs? Oh, that, 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 that the part. cotton candy, that, those the smells. cows, <laughs> what the cows leave behind, all that good stuff. Well, it's the Dane County Fair. It takes over the Alliant Energy Center grounds. Aerial artists, stunt dogs, animal exhibits, carnival rides, fair foods, live music. So let's touch a little bit on that live music. Thursday night, tonight, is youth night, and this year's Rock Onskin, Rock Onsen, Wisconsin, Rock Onsen, garage band winners, Quick and Painless will be there. Madison-based country music favorite Madison County headlines Friday night, and then contemporary Christian musician Ryan Stevenson will play on Saturday. I just have to give a shout out to all the 4-H'ers who are bringing oh, their yeah. animals, because I used to show pigs in 4-H for many years. It was like the highlight of my summer. It's a so big deal. A lot of hard work goes into that. For sure. So yeah. good luck to all of you. And for once, it's cool. Er, it's not. Oh, it's in the 90s during I the fair. I know it is. That's a great point. It's so perfect for the animals. Get out. Get out and enjoy. You bet. All right. There's also a chance to see a 
brand new space in Madison. Another event space, and like we don't have enough of them, but this is gonna be a really awesome one. So it is sure to be one of your new favorites. The space is called Communication, and it's over on Milwaukee Street. It's the grand opening on Saturday. It takes place from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. for all ages music and art space. So they'll have a musician and an art workshop, both kid-friendly events on Saturday morning. And then the fun continues all day long. A little live music later on at 7 o'clock. Go have a first chance at checking it out. Yeah, can't that's Can't have great. too many venues. You Not can't. for all that nope. we bring into Madison. No, that's a, true. On a weekly basis, for sure. A little later, you can do something to help pay tribute. Yeah, so this one is really neat. For just $10, you get in the door at the High Noon Saloon for a Thursday night tribute. Tonight at 9 o'clock, it kicks off. The Earthlings will pay, pay tribute to Daft Punk. So do you know the Daft Punk song? One more time. One more time. <laughs> she got face. you to sing. I well done, Emmy. Oh, yeah. I knew I would. I, I really like them. So they're yeah, going they to be, be singing that. and then I used to like them. No, oh, because, because I, I sang it. <laughs> and then singer-songwriter Ginny Kincaid will actually take the mic as Gwen Stefani. And then mm. other Madison bands are going to be backing her up as No Doubt. No doubt. No doubt. It's well, going to be good. But what if tribute bands aren't your thing? Well, then you want the real thing? Mm -hmm. I, I get that. You know, that makes sense. So then you're going to head over to a little Blues Travelers uh, extravaganza at the Edgewater Saturday night at 6 o'clock. So my favorite. Oh, once. Come on. I don't know this song. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, Midnight. Eerie. eerie. I work with something I in woke. my head. I woke. <laughs> I woke I'm with something woke. in my head. You know, it's got that little, sure. that twangy. I like it. So Saturday at the I Edgewater, you can head there. You know, he used to be a really good singer with me, and then, you know, a year into this, you would have just fallen well, off the wagon. Local favorite, the Jimmies, will actually open up. They're calling it the party of the summer, and that takes place at 6 o'clock. It sounds like it. And there's two other great options for music. And if you actually have time, it, this, if your schedule's open, you can actually hit them both. So Opera in the Park at Garner Park takes place Saturday at 8 o'clock. They'll have the Madison Opera and the Madison Symphony Orchestra. That's in the 17th year of that event. Bring your chairs and your mosquito spray. It will be a good time. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday at 2 o'clock is the 50th anniversary of the Capital City Band Concert at Oscar Rodenbaum Park on Regent Street. So a wide variety of music at this one. Even Mark's going to like. Two great events. Opera, opera in the park is great. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, and really like you is. said, if it's good weather, yeah. this will be a great weekend. Get out and, and enjoy it. And I think Sunday is the rain date. Is it? Yeah. Okay, I'm not a know. urologist. <laughs> I don't claim to play one on TV either. <laughs> it's just a schedule. Just I know. A, just a schedule. You're giving the, the weather early. I like it. All right. Thanks, Em. Thanks, Em. <laughs> Get this month's Madison Magazine. We're all the best in the Madison area. And we'll be right back.
Take a look at this, a giant statue of Jeff Goldblum has popped up in a London in London to mark the 25th anniversary of the original Jurassic Park movie. Now TV installed the 25-foot, 330-pound statue in character as Dr. Ian McCallum, Malcolm that is. It shows him in a scene in the 1993 movie, shirtless or open shirt, reclining. It took six months to build a statue next to the Tower Bridge. The film and Goldblum don't have any specific connections to London, but that doesn't seem to bother fans who are already flocking to the statue. This is the most random thing I could find today. It is pretty random. We spelled Jurassic wrong oh, there, but that's okay. I looked at it three times. One R? <laughs> One R, two S's, yeah. You know, I looked at it and I said, I better spell this right. <laughs> that's and I didn't. Good. That's pretty neat, though. Yeah, it is. All right, today is, what day is today? What day of the week? Thursday. Thursday, Thursday yes. <laughs> it's been one of those days. <laughs> Thursday, July 19th. It is Get to Know Your Customers Day. Yeah, our customers. We yeah. should get to know them, right? What's up? How's it going? <laughs> uh, it's also Stick Out Your Tongue Day. Uh, there seems to be no logical reason for this. I don't recommend combining the two days and getting <laughs> yes, to know your customers exactly. by no. sticking out no. your tongue. And it's also <laughs> National Flitch Day. A flitch is a measurement of bacon. Like a slab? It's a half of one side of a pig, also known as a slab. In England on this day in July, a married couple reaffirms their relationship by sharing a flitch of bacon. We don't quite have a flitch here. We have some strips. We have some look. strips of bacon right we there. We couldn't get like a BLT together or something. We just... <laughs> <laughs> they're not even warm. <laughs> oh, no. No, they're still Cold good. Cold bacon. They're pre-cooked. But it's pre-cooked. Oh, this, okay. This is the frozen Cold cream. bacon was my band in high school. I don't know if I <laughs> told you guys about that. No, no, it was not. But it it could have be. been. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, if, if it's a tradition with married couples, then... Can't you just be married to bacon? I don't know. That's my idea, at least. I got a lot of bad ideas <laughs> on, on live at four today. Just, we, got all, we got an hour here. Keep yeah, going. Exactly. Oh, man. Uh, the patent store is closed. But the rain store is not closed. We'll talk about the rain in store over the next couple days in your first alert forecast in just a few minutes.
Good afternoon. I hope you're having a great Thursday so far. A couple of rounds of showers have come through southern Wisconsin already this afternoon as this low pressure system gets closer and closer, but nothing like the weather in eastern Iowa right now. A couple of tornado warnings, some severe thunderstorm warnings. The good news is I do think that this patch of severe weather, this batch of severe weather, I should say, is going to head to the south and east, so it's going to avoid southern Wisconsin. A couple of storms tonight, especially for southwestern Wisconsin, may be a little bit on the strong side and feature some heavy downpours, but that's about it. Luckily, I think we miss a lot of this severe weather. 12-hour precipitation estimates. We've been talking about the downpour potential in this low pressure system, and already just over the past 12 hours, about two to three inches of rain in those most intense Tenth storms across eastern Iowa for southern Wisconsin, only about a tenth of an inch of rain so far, but that number will go up over the next couple of days. As I mentioned, I think that severe weather staying closer to where that slight risk issued by the Storm Prediction Center will be, which is just to our south and west. So zooming in on southern Wisconsin, we can see that first round of showers and thunderstorms well to the north now going through the Dells just a couple of minutes ago. And our next round starting to head closer to Platteville and Dubuque. Over the next three hours, I do think that these storms are continuing to move generally to the east and northeast, except for those severe storms that They'll head more easterly and maybe even a little bit of a southeasterly track. So our severe threats, we definitely do have the chance for some scattered storms over the next couple of days, really, and a couple of hours. Locally, heavy downpour is possible. Also, some thunder and lightning could be in the cards for some of us. But really, that's what we're watching, the downpour potential. And where those downpours set up, we could see about an inch to two inches of rain, maybe even locally heavier amounts over the next couple of days. So far today at the airport, only three hundredths of an inch of rain. That makes us up to 1.63 inches of rain. Still a little bit behind schedule. Rain totals as of yesterday, 1.6. We're about an inch behind schedule in the rainfall department for the month of July, and that has allowed some drought to actually creep back into southern Wisconsin. Not much, just some abnormally dry conditions, but spots in southern Iowa and northern Missouri could really use a little bit of rain. A live look in Platteville, the rain off in the distance, actually some starting to fall as we speak on the Queen Bee Radio Skycam. Downtown Madison on the Edgewater Skycam, looking at 78 degrees, the high today. That's about five degrees below normal for this time of year. We hit that earlier this afternoon, then the clouds came in and the rain cooled air as well and temperatures really cooled down. As I mentioned, some 80s showing up in high temperature land, but right now we are barely in the upper 60s in the Dells near 70 in Madison. Dew points have risen as well with that rain in town in the mid 60s, so starting to be a little bit more uncomfortable outside and wind speeds a little bit all over the place with the rain nearby, but generally out of the south and east at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. High temperature trend. We're looking at temperatures staying cool over the next couple of days with that low pressure system in town, but for Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, Temperatures make it back into the mid 80s, so a little bit above normal for this time of year. Future track showing this low, taking its sweet time over the next couple of days, bringing us really ever present chances for showers and thunderstorms even into Saturday as well. I think most of the shower and thunderstorm chances will be closer to Lake Michigan, but still keep that umbrella handy on Saturday. Tonight, scattered showers and thunderstorms, mostly cloudy and mild. Into tomorrow, breezy, more humid with scattered showers and thunderstorms once again possible. Similar story showing up on future track. We can see this low pressure system continuing to circulate and around that circulation. We get these scattered showers and thunderstorms. There's just a, not a lot in the atmosphere to push this thing out of here. So we're going to see a couple of rainy days across much of Wisconsin and southern Wisconsin included in that. Again, it depends on where those downpours set up, but potentially an inch to possibly two inches of rain by the time we get to later this weekend. Your seven day forecast showing those temperatures moving back into the mid 80s for Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Some showers and thunderstorms possible late Wednesday into early Thursday. Then we get a dry day Friday, but temperatures staying in the 70s for much of the back half of next week. And that includes into next weekend with more showers and thunderstorms possible Saturday 
and Sunday. So <laughs> it does look like temperatures staying on the cool side for the most part over the next 10 days. Mark and I don't want to jinx it. We were talking earlier. We've had very little severe weather so far this summer, right. which is and, a good thing. And we were saying that yesterday, and, and I looked at, into <laughs> Iowa just before the show. I was like, whoa, I better, right. not, I better not jinx anything. So um, yeah, it doesn't look like too much comes our way over the next couple of days, but we'll definitely keep an eye on it. Okay. We need, we need the rain. Yes. yes. All right. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Six nurses working together in North Carolina are sharing a very special connection. They are all pregnant and due within the next few months. The first baby is expected at the end of this month. Some of the pregnancies were planned, but others were unexpected. The women say they're excited to be able to share these milestones together. My husband and I tried for almost a year. So for all this to happen like at the same time is just really mind blowing. What we're most excited about is future play dates and getting a picture, you know, getting a picture of all the bumps was fun, but getting a picture of all the babies <laughs> is going to be yes. way more fun. <laughs> That's going to be so fun. The women work in a cancer ward together. They say their patients are having a lot of fun with the baby boom, and they're calling the ladies the fabulous six pack. <laughs> but all their coworkers, I'm gonna say, <laughs> who's going to be working on the on the floor? <laughs> they're here? all going to be gone at the same time. That's yeah. going to be crazy. All right. Well, we are right in the middle of peach season. That's right. When we come back, nutritionist Donna Weihoffen will join us. She has ways to use peaches in both sweet and savory dishes. Look at all those things Donna made. She'll share, <laughs> she'll share the recipes when we come back. I look at the UW campus and the Lake Mendota shoreline on this 
Thursday, some showers moving through the area for the next few days. Well, you know, summer's here <laughs> when the peaches are at the farmer's market. Donna Weihoffen is here with a lot of recipes. Peaches are so versatile, Donna. You can use them in so many recipes. I did. Everything from savory to sweet today. Oh, okay. they're, they're also kind of tricky to get they it. They are because tricky. Because this one, you, you know, it's is it ripe? It's, well, it's a little hard. I got this at Brennan's. It's supposed to be chin dripping ripe. And it was very, it's $1.25 a piece. A piece. A piece. Yes. Ooh. And I bought this one at a cheaper store. And it's hard and it's not as good. It's really hard to find a good peach. So? And so, um, I'm going to tell you that I use canned and frozen peaches in some of my recipes. And you won't believe how good they are. First of all, I'm going to do a, a, I'm going to use it savory. This is pork tenderloin or pork chops and a salmon. And what I did was use raspberry, sugar-free raspberry jam, a little bit of honey, lemon juice. Of course, there's brandy. Well, brandy, <laughs> it's Wisconsin. So Donna oh, always get, loves to cook with the brandy. The brandy, <laughs> the brandy in here. And the so bottle's always the, half the, empty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to use it in my recipe. It's good. I know. So it's a brandy peach sauce. And you can put this on meat, and it just dresses it up. And it's just a, yeah. a savory, good way to use peaches. And that these I used fresh ones because I could cook them. And then mm. even if they were hard, I could cook them. A little carrot in there? What is it? No, no. That's the peach. Well, that's, that's the peach? peach. Yeah, that's the peach. Oh. And some peaches are just kind of a little reddish. You know, that was made this with this peach that wasn't as good. But I cooked it. So uh, let's go to the salad. This is a gorgeous salad. It is, yeah, I love the this colors. Is, this is kind of your traditional basil and tomato and mozzarella cheese, but I put peaches in it. And see if we you've can gotta get get a, a, you've gotta get a good shot of this one because this is, this is really fantastic. I think we can get that? put on camera too. There you go. Oh yes, it's really, really pretty. What's in and it? Could, this is the mozzarella and the tomatoes, basil, and a little bit of dressing, and the dressing is red wine vinegar and a little bit of honey. And again, it's just a takeoff on that basil well, that's good. summer salad. And just sliced fresh peaches yes. or canned peaches? Or it doesn't matter, I guess. Well, yes, if you have some good fresh ones in that one. Basil, that's no, good. I use the, the Brennan's peaches in that mm. one. <laughs> so Very good. I on that. Now dessert, I, you know, peaches are great for dessert. And I made a peach melba pie. That's beautiful, Donna. And this Donna. is absolutely gorgeous. It's made with canned peaches because they're more consistent. Well, they're, they're going to be fresh. They're going to be fresh. And they're, they're canned at the peak of the season. Mm -hmm. They're all totally, you're going to cook it anyway. Don't feel guilty. Yeah, well, I just want to <laughs> tell people, they don't have to feel guilty either if you use canned ones. Or you can use frozen ones. And the frozen ones are also very consistent, so you don't have to buy fresh ones. And this one has frozen raspberries and, fro and peaches in it. That's a nice combination. And, oh, it's peach and yellow pie. But it has a pie crust. So if you don't want to waste your calories on a pie crust, I thought, well, why don't you just put it in a little, like, a crumble? This is actually blueberries, raspberries, and peaches with the same crumble topping, but without the crust. And so it's like a blueberry... Like a crisp. Crisp. And then you don't have the high-calorie crust. So either way, you can have the pie or you can have the crisp. You get a good picture. Yeah, it's all, it's all oh, in season now. The, the, the peaches are in season, so you can do the peaches that are in season. Or you can go ahead and, and use the canned or the frozen. But, you know, it's delicious, it's oh, sweet. This is really good, this, this oh, crisp yeah. thing. You better believe it's good. <laughs> <laughs> and since you're not eating the pie. I'm gonna eat the pie. <laughs> well, can I take one by your pie? Mm -hmm. This is so good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, now, what is it in peaches, the yellow color that is so good for you? Well, that's just the, that's full of vitamin A. And vitamin vitamins. A. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a very healthy fruit and it's low in calories. And when you combine it, especially with raspberries, I think it makes yeah, a that, that super, is a great combination. A super good combination. All right, all the recipes online at channel 3000com <laughs> Online, yes. A dollar twenty-five each. Yes. They're worth it <laughs> in these recipes. Home. Yeah. Donna, thank you. Thanks, Donna. Good to see you. Is, well, she likes the pie. We'll see you soon. I really like the pie. Oh, this is so good. We'll be right back. <laughs>
Good afternoon. Here is your first alert traffic update. Taking a live look at Todd Drive in the Beltline. Westbound not looking too bad, but eastbound still a little slow go at the present time. No major accidents or incidents to report across Dane County, but we can see those slowdowns on the Beltline in both directions, although westbound looking a little bit worse than eastbound. We are noticing those backups eastbound, though, closer to the interstate and Stoughton Road as well. But eastbound, we're, uh, we are looking about 10 to 15, maybe close to 25 miles per hour as far as your speeds. Drive times, University Ave to Verona Road, 10 minutes, average speed of around 40 miles per hour, up to 17 minutes, Verona Road to John Nolan eastbound, average speed still around 15 miles per hour. And in the other direction, we may have something going on because that drive time up to 22 minutes westbound from the interstate to John Nolan, down to 21 now, with an average speed of around 10 miles per hour. And that is your first alert traffic update. All right, thank you, Dave. The iconic house from the Brady Bunch is up for sale in Southern California. Here's the story. <laughs> you like that, Mark? Yes. The 2,500 square foot home, which was used for exterior shots of the beloved and or cheesy 70s sitcom, is on the market for $1.8 million. Sassy housekeeper Alice, not, in, <laughs> not included. Wow, <clears throat> I love that show. A third of Wisconsin voters are still undecided, less than a month away from the primary in Wisconsin on August 14th. That's according to the latest numbers released from the Marquette Law School poll and the director of the poll, Charles Franklin, back with us. Good to see you Hi, again, Charles, sir. Good, good to, to be here. 30% undecided in a lot of these races. Is that unusual this late? It, it's, this late? it's kind of a lot. It's 30% in the Republican Senate primary, and it's 38 in the Democratic gubernatorial primary. So both of those are big numbers, a third roughly. Let's take um, a look at some of the numbers that you showed, and you can break it down for us absolutely. a little bit. So um, on the governor's side, yeah, we have there. Tony Evers at 31%. Everybody else is below 10, and in fact, um, Malin Mitchell and Kathleen Weinhout are at six, tied for second place. Um, and that whopping 38% undecided. This is a case where Evers has also been pulling ahead more. He was at 18 in March, at 25 in June, and now 31. And no one in the rest of the pack has broken out of single digits. So there's four weeks to go. They've all kept their powder dry to buy a lot of TV ads in these last four weeks to the extent that they have enough money to do that. Can TV and, ads be a game changer at this late date, I, do you think? I think with so many people undecided and also a lot of people still say they don't know who these people are, even Evers has less than half of Democratic primary voters say they know enough about him to have a favorable or unfavorable view. It's much higher for some of the other candidates, but it could, could break suddenly for one of the pack, though it's also possible it breaks and goes to Evers. So this is really, Evers is clearly the front runner. You wouldn't want to call him the presumptive nominee by any stretch with 38% undecided in that field splitting the vote. But he's run for statewide races before, so there is some name recognition. Exactly. That, I think, is his real advantage. He's the only one in the pack that's done that. All right, let's look at the uh, Re Republican Senate race. Here we have a change in the kind of opposite direction. Um, uh, Leah Vukmir is at 34 and Kevin Nicholson at 32, the 30% 30 undecided. But here, this race has tightened. Nicholson was ahead by nine in March, up by just five in June, and now it's Vukmir who's moved ahead by just two points. The margin of error is seven points, so this margin is well within the margin of error, but it certainly qualifies as a toss-up at this point. Is this what you would expect to see in the summertime? People, are people just not paying attention? They're busy? I mean, is that a factor? I, I do think it's an, it's, a fact of our August primary that people are doing things in June and July other than paying super close attention to campaigns. When we had a fall primary, there was at least the fact that the kids were back in school and you were after the Labor Day holiday, maybe it was time to tune in a little bit more. But having said that, I think the big field on the Democratic side can help explain why voters have had trouble sorting out those folks. But the two Republican candidates, just two, are equally, if not more, unknown uh, compared to Tony Evers, for example. Did you run them against Tammy Baldwin in hypothetical races? Not this time. Okay. We had run that in June, 
And since we saw the results there, Baldwin was ahead by 11 against Nicholson, by 9 against Vukmir. It seemed like there was no point in asking it again until we actually have the nominees next month. We'll ask in, and, and it is in less, August. Less than a month. It's hard to believe. That's right. Time's ticking down. <laughs> and we'll narrow that fuel yeah. down to, to one. One of each party. Yep. Um, All right. Well, we'll keep an eye on things. <laughs> All right. And I'll, the poll you. coming out right soon after. Yeah, the, shortly after the primary. Okay. So. Have it. Rest of the, enjoy the rest of your summer. I'm going to go try. It's fading There's a fast. couch waiting for me right now. <laughs> you want to end a peach pie? <laughs> and a peach pie as All right, well. Charles, thank thank you. Charles. Good to see you. Thank you. We'll be right back with the final check of your forecast. So, some people getting rain? Yep, some people and more people throughout the next couple people of days. People who need rain? Yes, people that need rain, people that may <laughs> not want rain, but it's... People who uh, need people? Yes, exactly. Uh, but that's going over the next couple of days. I'm pretty sure that's a lyric in John Lennon's Imagine song, but that's neither here nor there. Live look in Platteville on our Queen Bee Radio Skycam showing those raindrops falling right now. Temperatures have fallen into the 60s and 70s across southern Wisconsin with that rain cool there. This evening, temperatures will continue to fall through the 60s, mostly cloudy with scattered showers and storms. And for tomorrow, we're looking at temperatures really only rising into the low to mid 70s with more chances for scattered showers and storms. This is Barbara Streisand. Oh, I'm sorry. People. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounded like a very peaceful song, and that's well, what I imagine came in. All right. That's a good song, too. <laughs> All Thanks, right. Dave. Let's move along. Tomorrow here at Live at Four, we'll meet two local girls who will appear on stage at the Orpheum production of Waitress next Orpheum. week. What did I say? Orpheum. Uh, the Orpheum, the big Broadway <laughs> show. Yeah, that's right. And Michael Bruno will be here with that. And we'll have the top animal stories of the week in Lola, look at Lola. Calm Lola's down. Lola's lowdown. That's coming up tomorrow on Live at 4.